SEC formally charges cryptocurrency firm Ripple and two executives with conducting $1.3 billion unregistered securities and offering. This is breaking crypto news. This is not, as yesterday there was a headline saying that the, the CEOs, the executives of Ripple expected to be charged. This is, they have officially, formally been charged. This is a problem for all of crypto. Whether you're part of, whether you like Ripple or not, full disclosure, I've never invested in XRP or Ripple. I don't really care for the project personally. In fact, one of the best videos ever when I was a new YouTuber with only a couple hundred subscribers back in 2019, 2018, was this video right here, why XRP will fail. I got the XRP army trolls coming out in mass. And quite honestly, that was the whole purpose of the video. I was trying to get engagement on my video and I knew XRP's trolls were viral. So I literally did a video and literally started watching the comments and just started responding to every comment, every comment. And they did not disappoint. I got massive comments. Probably half of them were, however, the other half were very good. And I really did get educated on XRP. And I've never made another video on XRP, even though I'm biased against it, because I felt like some of the things I had said in this video may have been wrong. And I want to give a shout out to anyone watching this video, any of these guys who went through and actually uh, XRP lovers. Some of you know who you are because you still watch my videos. But thank you so much for taking the time to literally educate me. You sent me links to websites and stuff. I looked at all of it. I looked at everything that was in that thread. I learned a lot about XRP. And it, not everything that I thought about it was in fact true. However, no matter what your thoughts are about XRP, this is basically the SEC against crypto, not just XRP. If they consider Ripple a security, then there are so many other projects that they could consider a security. And this ultimately is about control. And it's about it, we as individuals are going to lose some of our best investment opportunities right now. Right now, there's two main reasons crypto. Crypto is so profitable, not, not financial advice, but crypto is so profitable. The passive income, I mean, I have one project that I'm investing in right now that I am getting a stable zero point today. I did I did the math. It was zero point six six percent per day on one project that is stable and should. I mean, it's not like it's a Ponzi scheme. Like it's it should last for some time. It's doing unbelievably well. It's actually the the return has actually slowed down. It was much higher than that six or eight months ago. So it's un. I mean, in cryptocurrency, it's it's not unheard of to be able to earn ten percent, five percent. 15% interest on cryptocurrency balances and some certain projects, certain DeFi projects, etc. The the returns in this space, you know, being able to invest in a project, even Bitcoin itself, 3000 from 3 3500 earlier this year up to over $23,000. The possibilities, the returns, the investment gains that can be made in cryptocurrency because it's such an emerging technology are extraordinary, but they're only made possible right now for two reasons. Cryptocurrency is not mainstream yet. It's not truly mass adopted because when it does, many of us will be boxed out by the, the big hedge funds or the gains, the, the market will be saturated and the gains just won't be there. It's kind of like some of you that are familiar with DeFi farming of tokens. Before everybody starts farming is when it's profitable. When everybody gets there, the APY, the annual percentage yield drops drastically. That's going to happen throughout crypto eventually. The overall returns will eventually drop. Now's the time to make gains. Now's the time to be there. And I focus on earning passive income in cryptocurrency. If you want to learn how to earn passive income with crypto, you want to see what I'm doing, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification icon. But ladies and gentlemen, make no mistakes about it. The second reason that we have great gains right now is because it's not overregulated by the government. So it's not mainstream. Mainstream finance, legacy finance hasn't got in the way yet of those gains. And those, those projects are not overregulated. Many projects, if they get considered a security, you're going to have to be a, a, um, a, an accredited investor with an income of $200,000 or more per year the previous two years in order to even be able to invest in these projects. So this is bad for crypto. This is bad for the average investor that loves this space, loves investing in this space, and is really looking to be able to get ahead and make some great gains in this space. Whether you believe in Ripple or not, this is horrible, horrible for the opportunities that exist if 
Ripple and XRP or, or Ripple loses this because of their XRP token being considered a, a security. Let's let's go through this real quick. And I want to, I'm going to give a huge shout out to the two executives. I think it's Brian Garlinghouse, I think his name is, and Christian Larson, Bradley Garlinghouse and Christian Larson. I want to give them a shout out. I'll talk about that towards the end of the video. But first things first, by the way, if you believe in XRP, if you like Ripple, do me a favor, smash that like button. And if you like cryptocurrency over the U.S. government, do me a favor, smash that like button. The Securities and Exchange Commission filed charges Tuesday against Ripple, the fintech company best known for cryptocurrency XRP, and two of its executives. The SEC alleged that Ripple co-founder Christian Larson and CEO Bradley Garlinghouse raised more than $1.3 billion through an unregistered ongoing digital asset securities offering. Garlinghouse said the SEC's suit was fundamentally wrong as a matter of law and fact, and questioned its timing. The reality is they know they're in trouble. I'll get to that in a minute. They know, like they know that they know that they know this doesn't look good for them. I'll, I'll get once we read through this article. I'll, I'll come back to that. The Securities and Exchange Commission filed charges Tuesday against Ripple, the fintech company best known for cryptocurrency XRP, and two of its two of its uh, executives for allegedly violating investor protection laws. The SEC alleged that Ripple co-founder Christian Larson and CEO Bradley Garlinghouse raised more than $1.3 billion through an unregistered security offering. We allege that Ripple, Larson, and Garlinghouse failed to register their ongoing offer and sell a big billions of XRP to retail investors, which deprived potential purchasers of adequate disclosures about XRP and Ripple's business and other important long-standing protections that are fundamental to our robust public market system. Stephanie Ava Kian, director of the SEC's Enforcement Division, said in a press release. Garlinghouse had expected the lawsuit to be filed before Christmas. In a statement later Monday, he said the expected SEC suit was fundamentally wrong as a matter of law and fact and questioned its timing. XRP is a currency and does not have to be registered as an investment contract, Garlinghouse said. XRP was created and distributed by the founders of Ripple in 2012 and is designated to facilitate fast cross-border payments. The value of the currency against the U.S. dollar has approximately doubled since early November, thanks to a spike in the latter part of this month, but it's still down more than 80% of its peak in late 2017, while rival cryptocurrency Bitcoin recently hit an all-time high. They're not even rivals. They're just totally different use cases. That is such... See, this is when the average person reads CNBC, and you read, you're reading the writing of morons who don't even know what they're talking about. Anyway, the company is, was last privately valued at $10 billion and is backed by the likes of Japanese financial services, giant SBI holdings, Spanish bank Santander, and top venture capital firms, including Anderson Horowitz, Lightspeed, and Peter Thiel's founder fund. Ripple rank number 28 on this year's CNBC Disruptor 50 list. Okay, so here's the thing. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. So here's, here's two things. First of all, I want to give these two executives tremendous kudos. They were fully aware of the risks going into this space. Now, I'm not saying that they knew that they were going to end up in this lawsuit per se. They probably figured that if something was going to happen, it would have happened before now. And the reason I say that is because they they started in 2012. We're in 2020, almost 21. You're talking about eight years, basically. Eight years. Ladies and gentlemen, I can almost assure you seven of the eight years, the SEC was probably building a case against these guys. The federal government takes years and years to ever complete an investigation in many cases. Here's the challenge. And, and I want to, again, I want to give a shout out to these two executives because it's hard enough building a business in a hyper competitive financial fintech company, which is what they were building or are building, and being able to build in that space, which is already difficult enough, stressful enough, and then doing it, recognizing that you're operating in an area where the U.S. government could come after you, the banking sector could come after you at some point with some regulations or the banking lobby and or the SEC could come after you. So they already knew that there was a risk they could be attacked. However, this is a, this is really bad. They are in trouble and they know it. The SEC rarely loses. They do lose, but they rarely lose because they rarely bring a case forward until they know they have the I's dotted and the T's crossed and the documentation needed in this case. And the other reason I'm going to tell you that they know they're in trouble is because their defense isn't great. I mean, their defense, they were hoping they would never be considered a registered security. That's what they were hoping. 
Bitcoin and Ethereum supposedly aren't registered securities, so they were hoping that they would be class lumped in the same way. And of course, that is not very clear either why Bitcoin and Ethereum could be unregistered and why XRP could be registered. But this is bad for all of crypto. If you're in cryptocurrency, this is bad. This is, in my opinion, government overreach. This is a problem. This is government's method of attacking cryptocurrency through regulations. And again, I want to touch on the fact they know they're in trouble. And how do I know that? Because this morning they made this comment here. It's bad. They basically said in this article here, Bitcoin's controlled by China, Ripple, and tells the SEC that basically you don't want to come after us because we're not controlled by China because we're a little more centralized, essentially, which depending on... <laughs> Depending on who they're talking to, they've oftentimes made the argument that they were decentralized. But in this case, they're like, no, 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 we're a little more centralized. We can prevent China from controlling Ripple. So it's basically a, a matter of public policy in the U.S. If you want to stay competitive, don't come after us. Because at the end of the day, we could easily turn this all over to someone in China. Like, I don't think that's going to work, unfortunately. Um, Vitalik had something to say. He responded, the, the co-founder, the founder, developer of Ethereum. And I think he should have stayed out of this. But he says, it looks like Ripple XRP team is sinking to new levels of strangeness. They're claiming that their shitcoin should not be called a security for public policy reasons. Namely because Bitcoin in China are Chinese controlled. LOL. So, th by the way, is Bitcoin Chinese controlled? Nah, no, not really. Yes, it is. <laughs> what I mean by that is not by design, but whoever controls the most mining basically has some control over Bitcoin. And by, by and large, most of the miners are in China. And similar arguments probably could be made in some ways regarding Ethereum. So that's why he's saying they're Chinese controlled. Ethereum needs to stay out of this, though, to be very, I mean, Vitalik needs to stay out of this. Because at the end of the day, he doesn't want the federal government agreeing that XRP is, I mean, this was a PR stunt. Nobody was attacking Ethereum over this nonsense. Vitalik needed to keep his unicorn mouth shut. Because... If, if 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 XRP is considered if XRP is considered a security, there are so many Ethereum-based tokens that the U.S. government could go after. So many projects, possibly Ethereum itself, as it moves into staking Ethereum 2.0 and staking, possibly. Now, here's the challenge with this: Vitalik doesn't want to attract attention to himself, and he needs to be rooting for XRP to actually win this. Because if XRP wins this, then the US, the SEC is less likely to bring this kind of charges against another cryptocurrency project. But uh, I'm going to continue to follow this. If you believe in crypto and you believe that the government should stay out of cryptocurrency, smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, because I'm going to continue to follow this. And I want to share one more thing with you. I've got a video that I'm planning to put out talking about my predictions for 2021. One of my predictions is that the IRS comes after cryptocurrency in a big way. I believe the government's going to start cracking down, and I believe we're going to see cryptocurrency decentralized versus centralized blockchains come. I believe there's going to be a, a little bit, literally, a, a war in crypto. And what I mean by that, I believe when I say war, I don't mean that most people is going to get excited and anybody's going to get shot with guns. I believe regulations and laws are going to be coming. The IRS is going to be coming after people in cryptocurrency. You need to make certain that you're now, you're paying your bills, you're staying above board. You don't have to like the federal government. I'm no fan of paying taxes. I believe the taxation is theft, literally. When you take something from me and give it to someone else for any reason whatsoever without my, without my consent, that's theft. I don't care who you are. And I'm not saying I'm not an anarchist and I don't believe that we don't need to pay taxes. I think that we just pay too many taxes and the, those taxes are used uh, inappropriately. That's really what I have a problem with. However, the way to fight that is through education, creating content, talking to people, spreading the word, creating awareness, not, you know, somehow taking a, a one man army and choose that you're somehow not going to pay your taxes. That's not going to work. It's not good for you. It's not good for your family. And so in crypto, I encourage you to pay your taxes. I've, I've got a video coming up where I'm going to be showing you a very simple way. It's the simplest way I've seen to be able to figure out your cryptocurrency taxes. Like it's nearly painless. You can do it in probably 15 minutes, 10 minutes. Some of you can do it in five minutes. You can do it very, very quickly. Even if you're a, a complex trader and you make thousands and tens of thousands of transactions trading, even if you're doing you know, blockchain lending and you're in DeFi, if you're doing all those different types of projects you know, every single day, then even you can have this all done in probably about 30 minutes or so. 
I'm going to be covering that tip, that strategy coming up in another video. So be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification icon. And ladies and gentlemen, now's the time to be in crypto. Now's the time. I know I told you that, that there's this coming wave, but crypto is not going anywhere. Bitcoin in particular is going to be considered a store of value. They're going to, they are going to fight to prevent it from becoming a currency. But it is already well established to be a store of value. Bitcoin and or Ethereum at this point are going to be considered stores of value. I, I, that's my prediction. I know most people don't see Ethereum that way, but I do see it that way. I mean, I know that it has a different use case, but I think that it's going to be basically Ethereum is going to be what silver is to gold for Bitcoin. It's going to be the strong number two. But now's the time to start stacking cryptocurrency, stacking altcoins, because not financial advice, but if you're, you're going to be doing it, I think you need to do it now because my expectation is 2021 is going to be huge for the crypto markets. And now I know I just told you that it's going to be a war, but I did a video a while back talking about uh, four reasons why I thought cryptocurrency was going to basically do well, why I thought it was now was the time to buy, why I thought it was going back up, why I thought it was going to hit new all-time highs. I did that video, I think, yesterday. The use case of cryptocurrency as a uh, as a store of value is one that it looks like the federal government, even the federal government is willing to get behind. Big money, big financial lobbying, uh, lobbying, big financial industry, probably major lobbying groups are willing to say that, hey, cryptocurrency, maybe it's not a currency, but it can definitely be a store of value. This technology is going places. This is our end. I don't think it's going to stay a store of value, but I think that that's going to be what it's going to be used for right now in the near future of the next year, the next two to three years. So we could see the values of cryptocurrency go through the roof across the board. The entire coin market cap could be explosive. Now, that's my opinion. Don't take anything I say as fact. If nothing else, consider entertainment, satire. Use it as a chance to be able to go do your own research. But I want you to know something. No matter what you believe about cryptocurrency, no matter what you believe about XRP, I have two loyalties on my channel. That is, I want to educate and inform and help my viewers in an honest way, as honest as I can. I don't want to intentionally mislead anyone ever if I can help it. The second thing on this channel is I'm loyal to cryptocurrency over all else. The freedom to transact in a, the currency of your choice is what I want to protect, is what I want to talk about, is what I want to highlight. The ability to, for you to be able to earn cryptocurrency gains and financial rewards because you're early, because you're persistent, because you're diligent, because you make smart moves. I want you and I ultimately be able to earn as much income together as we can just because we're in the space, just because we're learning, just because we're educating ourselves, and just because we have the guts and we're willing to act. Again, that's not financial advice for you. Those are just my beliefs about my channel, the direction of my channel. And the content that I'm covering. So even though I'm not an XRP investor, I will side with XRP against the federal government every day of the week. If you agree with me, hope you're subscribed to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, decentralized cryptocurrency equals freedom. This is Crypto Wealth. I'm out.